I'm going to take seriously this, this, uh, the, the title, uh, Wealth of Nations in the 21st Century, and, and try and tell you what the rest of the 21st century is going to look like. Uh, so the place to start is with the uh, second half of the, of, the, of, the, of the 20th century, which was a remarkable time for, for, for economics. Uh, and the main events of that, that 50 year period were uh, uh, the continued steady growth of the US and the UK, which is where the Industrial Revolution began. Uh, <clears throat> the, the growth miracles after the war uh, in Germany, Japan, Southern Europe. I'll show you a picture in a second. And then the third, and, and with increasingly more important to what's happening in the current century, is that in, in the 50s and 60s were the ends of the European colonial age. So, 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 so billions of people who were basically uh, non-European peoples uh, governing, governed by European uh, uh, colonialists be became free countries, uh, <clears throat> free from their Europeans, not free from their own the leaders necessarily. So I'm going to show you some numbers based on just GDP in, in various parts of the world. They're all due to the, the uh, late uh, economic historian Angus Madison. Um, here's a picture of what <clears throat> of Eight currently successful countries. Uh, and I can put the little ones in there too, but but you've already got too many, too many curves on, on this thing. So you, I didn't want to put in. So so Denmark and Finland didn't get in my picture, but you you know about. If, if, if you can see who, where the U.S. and the U.K. were. You 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 know who's, who else is in there. Well, uh, all these are Europeans, and then the bottom is Japan, which you know, became. became serious about economic growth at this point. Now, I'm always going to be talking about levels. What we care about in terms of human, you know, living standards, we care about the, about the, the production per person in a society. Is, is, and, and growth rates are interesting because they take you from one level of production per person to another. That's already, Ed's already shown that in his slides. And, uh, I, you know. <coughs> Now, the period from 1870 to the beginning of World War II, there's some, some countries go up, some countries... <laughs> some countries uh, did better than others. So this is sounding bad to me. OK, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll talk real, I'll whisper. Some, some, some countries did, 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 did better than others, uh, but there's no real compression here. There wasn't very much, there was a lot of barriers to trade in these countries, a lot of, uh, you know, anti-liberal uh, policies. The only country that's really gaining impressively is, in, during this period is, is Japan. And, and Jap this is in a period where the rest of Asia was not growing at all. So all this movement from China, I mean, from, from Japan is leaving the rest of Asia and, and, and not to mention Africa behind. Then you see the, the, uh, the you know, blast of, of World War, War II, and it's easy to see who the losers and who the winners are. Uh, and then what happened afterwards is this very rapid compression of, of the, you know, the, 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 the <laughs> the losers in the war, or the Southern Europeans, which have always been had always been backward relative to the rest of Europe, they they all rapidly converged to something. It looked like they're all going to converge to the black curve, which is the United States. But the, but they didn't quite. There, there there's a there's sort of a gap of about forty percent between the best of the successful countries and, 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 and the most productive, not necessarily the best. And the others, uh, but they, in, b between 1950 and 1970, you had this tremendous compression. And why did this happen? A huge factor was just freedom, democracy. Uh, another factor was free trade. The European Common Market was a fabulous and huge improvement over the way Europe was run in the first part of this century. And, and it was not—it was not a, 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 a alliance against. 
North Americans or Japanese, they didn't raise tariffs against us either. So the whole, every country in this here is in a single, basically free trade zone, and, 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 and they're all sort of more or less capitalist economies. Of course, there's this thing as a purely capitalist economy. But <clears throat> and you can see what happened. And did this happen at the expense of, 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 the, of the UK and the US? Not at all. I mean, these are just parallel. The growth rates, it's, I call it 2%, but it's, I, 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 I'll, I'll go for 1.85, if you like. This trend growth is shared by all the successful economies, something like it. Um, after a while, you forget what's on the next slide. <clears throat> OK. <clears throat> so this 2% this, this growth rate uh, we started out as, as an English-speaking thing centuries ago. It is, is now shared by more and more countries, and more and more countries join that. <clears throat> uh, nobody's, uh, a lot of countries have grown faster than we have. Our countries have never grown a sustained rate faster than 2%. So the kind of numbers you're seeing, you, we've seen in Asia and are seeing now in China, there's nothing like it ever happened in the UK and the United States, and nothing like that ever will happen unless we you know, destroy our economy and let it come back up. Uh, so let me turn uh, to, th that was mostly a European picture that I showed you. Let's have a look at, at Asia. Uh, this is just, I'm, 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 I like log, logarithms, but this is a, a natural limit. So the, on, on this axis, you've got, uh, uh, this is 5,000 uh, US $1990. Is this what this five means? And that's the, the, the average GDP per person. So the family of four is going to be four times that, uh, unless, we, you know. <clears throat> and, and, and of course, this isn't take home pay, this is total production. So the government's taken large parts in every country and larger in some than in others. So here we begin, begin with China. I'm going to add uh, mainland China here. This would be like 500 or 400 dollars would be per person. And we're going to end up at 2008, which is the latest data I've got, with uh, 7,000. 7, and the top countries are up there in 30,000 per person. So the, the family of four has now got $120,000 in $1990. <laughs> now, this, this shows levels of living standards better than any picture I'm going to show you. So take a look. But I'm going to switch back to logs. And this shows growth rates better than the other picture does. Here, your growth rate is, is, is is uh, a, growth, a constant growth rate comes out as a straight line here, not as a, <clears throat> and so you see the US and the UK at the top. Um, and then you can see all these other countries are growing faster than our 2%. Otherwise, they wouldn't have gotten from the bottom to, to, to the top. Um, and this difference here in, the, in these hash marks is a 50% difference in your living standards. So the gap between, say, the US and the UK here is about 40%. <clears throat> and then you can see that here we've got the, uh, <clears throat> the uh, uh, city states. Well, red line is Japan. Here are, are, are uh, Singapore, no, Hong Kong and Singapore. Here is Taiwan. And, and, and South Korea, and then here is here is uh, here is China, <clears throat> and as Ed says, the, the city states are already up; they're up in between the, the band of, of the UK and the US. They they made it; they're rich, and they're not going to grow it faster than two percent ever again either. Uh, I'm not talking for about a month or a year. I'm talking about a ten-year period or something. Uh, you, the Taiwan and, and and, and uh, South Korea are pretty much there, but not quite. And here's China. Many, many 
thousands of dollars poorer in terms of living standards than, than any country on this picture, but growing faster than every, any country in this, in this picture. <coughs> Now, back in the 1960s, the, the miracle economy was Japan. And everyone was, in the United States was talking about the Japan. Japanese is the wave of the future. They're going to be the richest. They're going to bypass us. Uh, and, and if you, so he, 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 here, if you fit a curve, a growth rate curve to, to the China of the 1960s and extrapolate it, you get that picture. That's what people were worried about. Now, if you I'll just talk louder. I, I, I don't. I don't think we need all this. <laughs> and, and you can see, and this is important, but in the 1960s, the U.S. was growing faster than its two percent trend. Okay, this is not a translation. Translation. Okay. She needs it for a translation. Okay. So, so, so this this Japanese miracle was in no sense at the expense of the U.S. The U.S. got huge benefits for, from the prosperous Japan. But you know, you can see where the slopes are going, and by, according to this thing, by 1980, the Japanese were going to leave us in the dust. But you can see what actually happened when you follow the red, solid red curve and see that Japan joined the group of su successful economies. I don't believe they'll, they'll ever leave it. They'll move around within it. Uh, but they're never going to leave us in. We don't leave each other in, in the dust in, the, in, the, in these in these worlds. <clears throat> so what's going to happen in the rest of the 21st century? I've only taken you up to 2008. Uh, <clears throat> but I'll be, I'll be faster, because you're always faster when you're making things up instead of looking at actual data. <laughs> <clears throat> so can, you know, one concern is, can we keep this 2%, can, is this 2 maintainable forever, or 1.85? You know, who knows, right? So some people are pessimistic, some are optimistic. Remember the story about young Mozart weeping because, because he told his father that all the good music has already been written. Well, some people think all the good music has been written. I'm not one of those in, in terms of technological change, but I, I, I'm, I'm with Mozart's father. Yeah. <clears throat> But what's going to be exciting is not the 2% maintenance. Maybe it won't be 2. Maybe it'll be 1.85 or 1. I don't know. Uh, but, but what's going to happen to the vast majority of people who are living way poorer than, 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 than these leading countries? So I'm going to, again, I'll be focusing on China, the only really poor country I've, I'm showing pictures of. Uh, now, it's too late for, for South Korea and Taiwan to get rich, they were, they're already rich. Uh, so the only country that's, that's, that's going to grow, uh, gain a lot of the ones I've shown you is mainland China. Uh, so let's take the, the, way, the, the bad way of, of predicting. We'll fit a curve to China's, to China's current growth rate and, ex, and extend this. We'll take a, to the curves for the growth rates of, of the advanced countries, the US down to the UK. Uh, and there you see the 21st century. And, and it, uh, I, it, I, didn't, I didn't get, get us any past 2070, because you, you can figure that out for yourself. You know? <clears throat> now, this is the same mistake we made in the 60s, in the 70s, talking about Japan. It, it, it's <clears throat> I like to use a little formula which says the growth rate in your country is equal to the leader's growth rate, 0.02, times something. And, and this times something is the higher the, the leading country is relative to your country, the faster it's going to give you an added bonus. So the poorer you are, the faster you grow. This doesn't work for the sort of Chad, Mali level places, but it, it's going to work for the countries. It's working for, the, for China. And then this theta is it's some parameter, which I estimated. 
estimated it on, on, on the miracles that we've already seen. <coughs> so there's two parameters involved. This is by theta, two thirds. And, and the stand, the growth rate of the leaders is 2%. Apply this, apply that formula that I gave you, which is all solving an equation that I won't put you through. Again, we're, we're starting by extrapolating the, the, uh, the last uh, decade of Chinese growth, but, but we're applying it to, to a curve which takes into account the fact that as China gets richer, they're gonna, they're gonna, uh, they're gonna slow down, and they're never gonna leave the rest of us in the dust, because we don't leave each other in the dust in, the, in, this, in, this, in this benign world. Um, so this is, I mean, I don't know, is this a disappointment? Uh, I, I don't want to, you know, but, but in terms of actual lives, improvement of lives of actual people, what this says is that in 2050, uh, this is, <clears throat> the Chinese living standards will be about the same as U.S. living standards today, okay? So I, I call that, now of course the U.S. living standards are gonna keep growing too, uh, but, but if that really happens, it's gonna be you know, the, one of the major, thinking of all these people, one of the major uh, improvements in, in large masses of people that, you know, by far that, that has ever, ever been seen. So it's just, it just seems to me a glorious, uh, uh, thing for China if they can pull it off, and we've already talked about lots of, you know, <clears throat> and and again, it is not at the expense of, uh, according to my, what, uh, of of the level of income in the countries that are already rich. <clears throat> so economic growth is not a zero sum game. Uh, the post-war recoveries of Europe and these miracles in other countries ha have been hugely beneficial to the United States uh, as trading partners. Uh, and I can only, it's only wish that the mainland China, will, it was already happening, is, is, is joining this and they too will benefit the rest of us. So what we want to hope for for the coming century is let's move on to Africa and South Asia and the other countries that haven't gotten on this, on, on this, on this track. I don't want, this is an old slide picture, but I love it. What we're, what we're, I'm gonna include with this, what, what we're experiencing here are the final phases, in some sense, of the, of the Industrial Revolution. If you go back to the, to, to the, to the early 18th century, the fraction, the, 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 the fraction of the world's population that, that was European. So <clears throat> that was about 25%. And the fraction of production in the world that was European, that's the black curve, that was about 25% too. What does that mean? It means the living standards for European people and the living standards for European people were, were, were roughly the same. Uh, and why not? I mean, we think people are, 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 are pretty much, the economists do anyway, we think people are pretty much the, the same no matter where, where they're from or who their ancestors are. <clears throat> Economically, that was, that was not inconsistent with... with <clears throat> now, what happened is the Industrial Revolution took off is, is that, first of all, there it, it was a boom in the population of Europeans because one of the things you do is you get richer is to have more kids for a while. But what really took off is, is the share of production that, that was produced by Europeans. And if you look at, at, uh, at 1950, you've got 75% of the total, total production in the world was, was done by Europeans as opposed to 25% here. And, 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 and population what was, was about 36. Now, now this is turned around, this is over. These peaks are never, weren't those, these peaks were artificial in some sense. And there's this huge inequality between Europeans and non-Europeans. It, 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 it never emerged until the Industrial Revolution and, and, and it seems to me it can't, can't be sustained. So what we're gonna see in the century we're in, and it's already happening, it didn't show in this picture, but, but it was already starting to happen in, in the last part of the 20th century, 
is we're returning, we're, the, the, the population growth of, of non-Europeans, it hasn't surpassed the Europeans, gotten back to it, but, but it, you know, the, the non-Europeans are growing faster than Europeans. Now, they'll, they'll have a turnaround and, and slow down, too, and most of them have in many countries. But I don't know where this, this curve's going to end up. But what I do know, I'll bet, I'll be, I, you know, I may not live to see the whole century, but I, I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll, stay, I'll stay as long as I can, uh, is I, I think that black line is going to end up meeting the, 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 uh, the, the, the purple line that the relative standings of European and non-European people are going to get closer and closer together. Not because we're all falling back to some 1750. Our living standards are growing steadily. It will be at 2% or so. Uh, but, but the in inequalities in the sense of differences in different uh, countries will, will, will be reduced to something like the differences we have within the club of wealthy countries in Europe and, and North America and Japan today. Okay? Tilt. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.